Great answer. Uh, Father Mark from St. Louis, King of France Parish in Bucktown, Louisiana, joined by Father Savakin, as we offer the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass for the Solemnity of Palm Sunday. The reserved intentions of this Mass are for Mary Morales, Elena Agudelo, Olive Arsimon, James Sticker, Erlene Zola, Charles Wyndham, Evelyn Sticker, Sandra Brown, Deacon Uriel Doerr, Catherine Godfrey, and Thanksgiving for Mary Marks, who reports positive developments. Let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you, and with and your, spirit. your spirit. Brothers and sisters, since the beginning of Lent until now, we have prepared our hearts by penance and charitable works. Today we gather together to herald with the whole Church the beginning of the celebration of our Lord's Paschal Mystery that is to say, of his passion and resurrection. For it was to accomplish this mystery that he entered his own city of Jerusalem. Therefore, with all faith and devotion, let us commemorate the Lord's entry into the city for our salvation, following in his footsteps, so that being made by his grace partakers of the cross, we may have a share also in his resurrection and in his life. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ the King in exaltation may reach the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. When Jesus and the disciples drew near Jerusalem, and came to Bethphage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village opposite you, and go, and immediately you will find an ass tethered and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them here to me. And if anyone should say anything to you, reply, The Master has need of them. Then he will send them at once. This happened so that what had been spoken through the prophet might be fulfilled. Say to daughter Zion, Behold, your king comes to you, meek and riding on an ass, and on a colt, the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had ordered them. They brought the ass and the colt and laid their cloaks over them, and he sat upon them. The very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and stretched them on the road. The crowds preceding him and those following kept crying out and saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was shaken and asked, Who is this? And the crowds replied, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks to you. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit his share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first reading. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I haven't rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from prophets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wake their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count all my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my virtue they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me, O oh, my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God. Why have you abandoned me? Second reading. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Passion of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priest and said, Why are you, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him thirty pieces of silver, and from that time on he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the feast, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. 
When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into this dish with me is the one who will betray me. And the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and giving it to his disciples, said, Take and eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant which will be said on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you from now on, I shall not drink this fruit of the wine until the day when I drink it with you, new in the kingdom of my Father. Then after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, This night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here. <coughs> Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, My father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So you could not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking, you will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priest and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you are come for. Then, stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who had accompanied Jesus put his hand to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, 
and he will not provide me at this moment with more than 12 legions of angels. But then, how would the scriptures be fulfilled which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day, I sat teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all this has come to pass that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. <clears throat> then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priest and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God, and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus remained silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He deserves, he deserves to, die. to die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ, Christ who, who is, is it that, that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You do you with Jesus, Jesus the Galilean. Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know who you are talking about. As he went out of the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This, this man was with Jesus, Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you, you two are one of them. them. Even your, your speech, speech gives, gives you away. away. At that, he began to curse and swear, I do not know the man. And immediately, a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What, what is, is that, that to us? us? Look to, Look to yourself. yourself. Flinging the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money but said, It is not lawful, lawful to deposit, deposit this, this in the temple treasury, but it is the price of blood. blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why that field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the thirty pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord had commanded me. Now Jesus stood before the governor, Pontius Pilate, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus called Christ? For he knew 
that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was still seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message, have nothing to do with that righteous man. I suffered much in the dream today because of him. The chief priest and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to them in reply, which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Barabbas. Pilate said to them, then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, let him, let him be, be crucified. crucified. But he said, why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, let him, let him, be, him be crucified. crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His, his blood, blood be, be upon, upon us and upon, and upon our, our children. children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and threw a scarlet military cloak about him, weaving a crown of thorns and placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, Hail King, King of, of the Jews. Jews. They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself if you are the Son of God and come down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He saved others, he cannot save himself. So he is the King of Israel, let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusted in God, let him deliver him now if he wants him. For he said, I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Yeli, Yeli, Lema Sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, let us see if Elijah comes to save him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the body of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening. And they said, Truly, this was the Son of God. There were many women there, looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. When he went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus, then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. But Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there facing the tomb. 
The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter while still alive said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders then that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the book of Zechariah, chapter 9, the prophet foretold that the Messiah would enter Jerusalem in a posture of humility on a donkey. The book of Psalms, number 118, recorded the proper response of praise and thanksgiving, which the faithful were to give. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. By way of contrast, in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, the prophet foretold that the Messiah would be spurned, condemned, and executed. The book of Psalms, number 22, recorded the words of anguish he would speak. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Today, the church directs our attention to the fulfillment of both sets of prophecy. The glory of Palm Sunday, as well as the rejection of the Passion. The people assumed that Jesus intended to be a Messiah of worldly glory, like King David, that he would crush the Romans as David had crushed the Philistines. When Jesus disappointed their expectations, preaching that his kingdom was not of this world, they proved unable to set aside their own desires and simply accept the will of God. Instead, they turned on Jesus. Instead, they chanted for his death. Today, the church begins Holy Week. Again and again, the readings assigned in the coming days will confront us with examples of human sinfulness. This is, of course, discouraging. But the purpose of Holy Week would remain incomplete if we stopped with discouragement. Far more important is to be reminded anew of the holiness of Jesus, our true Lord, our true King, who sacrificed and suffered for us in a way that no earthly ruler ever would. That being the case, we can find no better conclusion than the description St. Paul wrote in chapter 2 of his letter to the Philippians, that Jesus emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, accepting death on a cross. Because of this, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Let's all stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. 
Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we know that God will never abandon us. So we cry out with all our needs and the needs of the world, knowing that we will be heard. For the Church, may the celebration of the Paschal Mystery lead us to a deeper appreciation of our baptism into the death and resurrection of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders of all nations, may their decisions bring safety, justice, and equity to all persons. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are unable to stay home during this pandemic situation, may God protect them in the serving the public, protect their family and friends, and keep them healthy and safe. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our families, neighborhoods, and workplaces who feel abandoned or forsaken, that they may feel the Lord's tender presence through the compassionate outreach of others. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, for the poor and homeless, lonely, and all who are abandoned by society, for all who have died, especially those who have died from the coronavirus, that the love of God poured out into all of our hearts through the Holy Spirit may bring peace and comfort to all who suffer. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. For all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts, for all our intentions, spoken and unspoken, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving Father, listen to all of our prayers and petitions. Grant them in your love and mercy. We make this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God by you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual tree. Blessed be God for you. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, 
for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like do you fall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save a savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Gregory, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints 
who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and born with the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant a peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, we say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through the loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, my soul shall be. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection, you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you the Father, and the Son, 
and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, the Mass is entered. Thanks be to God.